Hi, I'm Trevor. And I'm Jacob. And we're the, the Fungi, Fungi Fanatics. Fanatics. So I get asked more frequently than you would think, how do you harvest mushrooms? And what do you even do with them once they're harvested? In this video, we are gonna cover all of that. There are a few ways to harvest a mushroom. You can cut it at the base with scissors or knife, or even just pluck it with your hands. Whichever way you want to do it is up to you. Now, my personal way to harvest mushrooms in my boom box is by using a pair of spring scissors. They're small, comfortable, and they get into those really hard to reach areas. It's really easy on the hands when you're harvesting a lot of mushrooms like this. I prefer to cut my mushrooms right at the base where the substrate is still attached. This allows the mycelium that's on the surface to grow back and recover more easily and cause less damage. Plus, you end up with a pretty clean mushroom. The best way to store your mushrooms is by keeping them in a refrigerator. Keeping them fresh for about a week or two and use them as you need. Honestly, they taste better when they're fresh anyway. However, if you grow more than you bargained for, which you most likely will. I know I'm not gonna eat that many in two weeks. <laughs> the best preservation method is either to process them into food or dry them to store for a later time. Now, there are plenty of different ways to dry your mushrooms. You could use a food dehydrator, sure. However, it could be as simple as just setting them out on a plate. I personally love to use a perforated sheet pan while simultaneously blowing a fan over them. It will take a few days, but they'll end up being cracker dry. And once the mushrooms are dry, they can be stored in an airtight container for months and they'll retain their potency for about a year. When I harvest my mushrooms, I really just like to snap them at the base because it really doesn't damage the, the surface as much as if you were uh, to just, you know, grab one down here, kind of twist it and pluck it. You see how you're just gonna get all of that surface substrate on there? By the time you harvest your entire boom box, it's just gonna completely decimate the surface. And honestly, if you have to do that occasionally, or say you knock one over when you are harvesting, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you're, you're gonna get that. And like you saw earlier, I kind of just let it drop back onto the substrate surface. Some people might tell you, oh, you don't want to do that because it's not clean and it's going to mold and blah, blah, blah. But in all honesty, the mycelium kind of just reabsorbs itself. The mushrooms, they're very resilient when they're at this stage. They, uh, they're really not going to get mold growing on them because it's, it's fully colonized already. There's really no places for mold to get introduced and you're typically gonna just end up drying out the cake and basically having the mycelium live its entire life cycle before, before it really like starts to become problematic. Um, if you do see mold, however, in your grow tub at harvest, just try not to let the mushrooms touch it because you know nobody really wants to eat mold, nor should you. Um, but more often than not, I typically don't even see mold starting to occur until about the third or fourth flush. Um, these, this boom box that I'm harvesting right now is its first flush. And the first flush is going to easily be the most dense fruited flush out of all of them. Uh, you're, you're gonna get flushes every one to two weeks after this, and you will get a good amount of mushrooms to grow, but it's never gonna be the same or as much as what you got for that first flush. When your second flush shows up, you're gonna get mushrooms that are gonna be a lot denser and a lot larger than your first flush mushrooms. And honestly, that characteristic will probably follow through for the remaining like three, four. I mean, honestly, I've had these things go even six flushes. And you can also see I'm, I'm manhandling these suckers. Like I'm holding five of them in one hand when I pick them. You can just kind of, you know, keep palming them, throwing them back, snipping a few here and there, and just slapping them down. Uh, obviously when you place them on a, on a pan or a sheet, 
you're gonna want to spread them out to a degree, but they can be they can be on top of each other a little bit. Um, they will kind of stick to each other when they start drying, but it's really not the end of the world. And more often than not, they separate pretty easily once they are dry. The pan that I have over here is filling up quite quickly. Um, we'll probably be able to stuff all these mushrooms on this one pan. Some of the best ways that I honestly like to process the mushrooms into after I've harvested or after I've dried is by making a little bit of mushroom tea. It's a really easy digestible way to get the mushrooms into your body. Um, you're not going to feel the heaviness of the fruit body in your gut. Um, there's other uh, other methods too, like you can you can process them into chocolates a lot of people do, which are a really palatable way to do it. Um, you can also do gummies and other kind of fruity candies in order to get them in you. Um, not to mention uh, there's, there's smoothie recipes out there that are really good uh, that mask the flavor. Pretty much anything that's gonna be abundantly sweet or abundantly tart is gonna mask the flavor of these guys pretty pretty nicely. That, or uh, just stick them in your fridge and make sure that they are, they're not molding and you can just eat them as you will. They're honestly a lot more palatable when they're fresh than when they're dried. And you're often gonna notice too that a lot of these mushrooms grow into one another and if you're leaving a little bit behind or you cut one a little bit, you know, too high up, that's okay. You're gonna grow plenty more. But and you can see now that the surface is pretty much exposed and I'm almost done harvesting this tub. And I guarantee you what we have here is over an ounce. If anything, it's probably closer to an ounce and a half just off of this first flush. And like we said before, you should get at least an ounce dried with your first flush. So after I'm done harvesting the boom box, there's no mushrooms on here and you can really kind of see that the surface of the mycelium is a little bit drier, especially in the areas where you, you picked some out and you know you had a little bit of extra mycelium left in there. Um, what I really like to do at this point is just make sure I missed it really, like not really heavy, but plenty to the point that you can start seeing the water droplets really start to set on the surface of the mycelium. It'll almost look like how it looked when your hyphal knots were forming for the first time. Um, but I like to take it a little bit past that because at this stage, it's all about the recuperation of the mycelium. It's gonna wanna rest and just consolidate itself again because I mean, you just chopped off all its limbs for crying out loud. Like it needs to rest and recoup itself and get into a state of mind where it's like, okay, it's time. We're gonna fruit again. We've got another shot. Let's do it boys. And after a week or two, you're gonna get a whole second flush. And it, it honestly might be right around an ounce again, but typically it'll be a bit less. By the time you're done with three flushes though, you're easy gonna have two ounces dried. And I don't know about you, but that's, that's probably enough for me for the better part of a year. I think we've showed you guys pretty much everything that you need to know to bring a boom box from step one all the way to the harvesting point, to the drying point, and how to successfully keep your boom box growing after the first flush. Check us out at fungifanatics.org. You could also find us on Instagram at fungifanatics.growlikethepros. My name is Jacob. And I'm Trevor. And we're the, the Fungi, Fungi Fanatics. Fanatics.